Thanks everybody for joining today. We're doing something a little different. Typically we do a Teams live event, but I wanted to take the opportunity to try to do a um, true Teams meeting. Um, some of you heard a moment ago that we had to mute all to keep um, those open mics from interfering with the presentation. If you have any questions, comments, want a dialogue, there is an option to raise your hand. It's up on my top of my menu bar. You can select that and we can unmute your mic. There's also, um, of course, the chat box. Feel free to put throw any questions in there. I anticipate this to be a pretty short presentation. Um, but an important one. Sorry it had to get delayed. Not sure if you can tell. I've got a little bit of a cold. I caught a little case of the COVID um, and um, luckily it's been pretty mild, but boy, I sure did sound bad. So we had to move this back a few days till today. Um, so hopefully I don't have a coughing fit or sneeze or anything like that during the presentation. That being said, I'm probably gonna turn off my camera so I'm not self-conscious while I talk and go through the slide deck. So let me go ahead and turn off my camera there to start. So TIDW, I did send out an email to all finance officers and I wanted to send out the communication about this webcast to the all state and US finance contact list because I know there are some people that don't have the title of finance officer but do um, a great deal of um, management of Munis and may be interested in, in what's going on. So TIDW is um, Tyler Identity Workforce. It's a cloud-based authentication platform that will integrate with Okta as well as Azure Active Directory. Um, so you'll be using the same credentials that you use to log in to your work computer and email. And this works whether you're a Google district or a Microsoft district, it's moving to um, um, same sign-on. So one less set of credentials to remember, which is really nice. Um, you do want to double check and talk to your district um, ed tech leaders about MFA configuration and look at that before your um, test date so your users are set up and know how to use MFA if they don't already have that. Um, another thing is we need to have this implemented before the next Munis upgrade, which will be at the um, later on in the fall this year. Um, the current version of Munis is scheduled to retire in October 2023. So we need to have this in place before we can um, start testing and migrating to the next version of Munis. Um, and also another note that I get a question on a lot. This does not apply to employee self-serve, but um, those districts that do own employee self-serve, um, it does integrate with the next version of Munis, although I believe that is also an additional upgrade where you'd have to um, upgrade to a newer version of employee self-serve that I believe is called employee access. So that's just a general idea on what's going on with TIDW. What's required of the Munis admin, I hope, um, should be very minimal. You need to run the DIA, which many of you should be familiar with from your Munis upgrades, but with the DIA, we're only focusing on a few items within the DIA, and those are duplicate email addresses, duplicate employee numbers, anything related to um, user accounts, which would be those two things. You know, anything related to the general ledger and accounts that you may, may come up on the DIA, that is not uh, of concern for this. We're just working on how to log into Munis. So um, I'm gonna discuss some of those common DIA um, issues that'll come up when you run your integrity assistant. Um, the other thing you want to make sure of is that the Munis user email address um, and user attributes matches um, their actual real email address. So, um, uh, technically, it needs to match a user account as your Active Directory, but their tech leader should um, already have that set up. So something, though, to make sure that all your Munis users have their um, district email address um, in that email address field and user attributes, and it's spelled correctly. So talking about spelled correctly, back, gosh, I can't believe I've been doing this job for this long. I joined... Um, this team back in 2009 and um, my email was sent out with my user ID and it was misspelled but that doesn't matter my my name's misspelled all the time we ha do have some KDE support accounts and they're used for support only um, there's 
been some integration done so we still have access. Our email accounts do need to be updated. So these are the three KDE accounts listed. They knew, we are now Super K, um, along with um, Kim York is Super K. Um, there and, and we have Super Steve. So those email accounts need to be updated or else we will not be able to log in and provide support. You know, that's being said, those accounts have been, um, you know, sent out in the past and distributed for support purposes only. You know, you as a Munis administrator can certainly choose to disable those accounts within Munis, the enable, disable, um, toggle at any time and enable it when um, support is required. Just remember you as a Munis administrator may not be around and your payroll folks or somebody may be needing some help and um, they don't have access to change that. So if we're, if we're disabled, we can't get in. But um, just wanted to throw that information out there. The other big thing is scheduling. This is a first come, first serve basis. Uh, you know, we only have so many spots at the moment available. Scheduling is tight. So you don't want to sit and wait on this. Go ahead and find a date on the calendar and get yourself scheduled. Um, this is should be very light lifting on you. As I said, it's just pretty much DIA work um, on your part, and it's very minimal work. There is a, an Excel file that you can access. It's view only. I have the shortcut was listed on the screen, but it was included in the email I sent out with all the instructions on scheduling. There's a Microsoft form where you go in and put enter some dates in because we, um, as I said, it's first come first serve. And um, Kathy Pelletier is actually working on scheduling uh, the upgrades with the team at Tyler. Um, once you are scheduled, a support ticket will be created and an email will be sent to you by the deployment engineer that's assigned to your upgrade. Uh, I know there's probably been a lot going on with people scheduling, so there may you may not have received an email yet. Um, if you're curious, though, you can go back and double check the um, schedule and it'll show if the date that your um, district is listed to go in the case number. So if you haven't seen anything yet and you're not for sure, you can please double check that schedule and those emails will be coming to you from the deployment engineer. So some of the common DIA questions I've received so far. Um, first of all, the DIA is required. If you don't do your DIA work, those duplicate email address and some um, the duplicate employee numbers will be a hard stop on, um, on your upgrade happening and you being able to access Munis is going to cause an issue. So please make sure this is done prior to your upgrade date. Um, I suggest, you know, make do it in production and then refresh, trust, and test and train. Um, if for some reason you have something going on in your test or train environment, you don't want to refresh and just make those DIA corrections in there and um, it can be upgraded at that point. Um, also, don't want to waste the engineer time or scheduling spot by um, you having something scheduled and then they're not able to upgrade your environment um, because the DIA work wasn't done. So the first one is the duplicate email addresses. The um, most common one I've seen thus far. And what I see quite, I use Jon Snow, still love my Game of Thrones and Jon Snow, which I'm not sure if anybody's heard. There's supposed to be a Jon Snow series coming at some point. I'm excited about that. Um, but a user that's been around for a long time that was back when pre-cloud may have had an account that was named for Jon Snow and he had his email address in there. And then once he moved to the cloud, they had an account created and 983 Jon Snow and there's duplicate email addresses there. You can actually um, fix this from within the data integrity assistant by um, selecting update and deleting out that duplicate email address. So any duplicate email address um, needs to be done, including I clean it up for an active people as well, um, can be done pretty quickly through that DIA assistant. Um, also, same with duplicate employee numbers. I've seen that in one other place. So you can see the duplicate employee number example here. Um, you can select update, um, delete that employee number and, you know, accept and output post that so it gets updated and the employee number is only on the active employee. Um, there's an example, update, um, clean out that data condition and select apply. 
The other duplicate email address that comes up quite often is the ASP at tylertech.com email. So you may find that um, this may have when we went to the cloud that some accounts were created that say um, XXXX support. Those accounts are not needed. You should have a support account that is um, named like example 9123 support that would remain. Um, also, you'll be receiving information from your support um, deployment engineer, and they'll say you'll need to update in Munis user attributes the email address in that support and implementation um, account. And um, it doesn't need to be an Active Directory, is my understanding, is what they told me. You just need to update that account in your Munis user attributes. So if your district was 9123 support your district name and kyschools.us. Pretty quick fix to do. Um, somebody's also asked me on those duplicate email accounts, can they just delete the users? And no, I would never suggest deleting a Munis user ID from Munis um, from the user attributes. They're um, if they had any work done in Munis, um, you know, their audit history is tied to that user ID. If you delete the user ID, you won't know what user that was that did the work. So Tyler supports um, suggest to not do that unless it's absolutely necessary. And I don't see a reason why it, it would be absolutely necessary for this conversion. So, okay, so you did your, all your DIA work. Shouldn't take very long. As I recommended, make your um, updates in live. Remember to update those KDE email addresses and then refresh your train and test environment. The other thing I want to, um, um, what's the word, en encourage is as soon as your test environment is upgraded, don't delay on verifying that you can log in to test and make sure that it works. Typically, the uh, your production and train update is scheduled within um, two to three weeks, possibly even a week of your upgrade. So if there's any issues, we definitely want to be able to jump on that as soon as possible with the engineers. Um, of course, we hope there shouldn't be any issues, but you never know. So please do that as soon as possible. And maybe not just um, yourself, we have some of the other district people in your district that use Munis log in. Um, MFA may be required the first time you log in. Um, again, talk to your district tech folks or your ed tech leaders on your MFA configuration um, before your upgrade. And when you log into test, just verify a couple programs can um, load. And I've been told to recommend Account Inquiry and Chart Manager. The reason being these two programs is one runs on um, um, I believe .NET versus maybe HTML. Anyway, technology, they're running on two different platforms, so just make sure you can run both programs. Okay, other common questions that I've seen thus far. Um, hey, will my links still work? So you have some shortcuts set up on how to get into Munis. Yes, those still work. Those direct you to your Tyler Hub. What happens when you click on that? you'll be directed, um, redirected to this Okta screen. Users will put their email address in at that point, and then they will, they will be redirected to a Microsoft login screen for authentication. Doesn't matter if you're a Google or a Microsoft district, you will see that Microsoft um, login screen and you enter your um, email password. Um, another question is like, what about cloud admin and where we set users up now in cloud admin? Cloud admin is essentially like an active directory service that Tyler has. Um, we're, that's used for authentication. We're now authenticating through Azure. So the users don't need to be set up via cloud admin anymore. That being said, your, you, the, your current user ID that you use now, you will still need to maintain that if you use any of the following services. Um, uh, Excel cubes, of course, if you just need to access the Munis Cloud Admin for um, refreshing your environments and year and backup. If you use the secure.tylertech.com, you would still need that. Um, so 
if you have any need for those services, you will still need to use those, um, your quote, quote, your old credentials and refresh um, or reset your password every 90 days. So um, I imagine for a lot of users, that is not the case. I will say there is um, a state uh, VPN available. You need to speak to your ed tech leaders about that and requesting it for you. It's a Cisco VPN. There's some information out on on my Katie Munis Guide website on accessing Munis um, remotely that has information in it. Um, password resets. I've been asked about that. So your password that you're using again in Munis is the same as your email password. So you would not be using that Tyler password reset unless those prior um, conditions existed. So if you have questions on how to reset your email password, or your network password, you'd want to speak with your techno district technology staff about that. So another question I've received, which is a, a great question, is how are my auditors going to get into Munis now? There is a way. Um, after your upgrade, you will pro should receive this email. I took a snippet from ours. Uh, the administrator, the person assigned to the ticket, would receive this. Um, don't delete it. Save it for future reference. It allows you to add users that should only be used for people that are not within the um, district. So I see a question here. We'll get back to that. Um, Let's see here. Uh, as I mentioned, an email will be sent to um, a, the account. So I used actually a Gmail account and tested this out. So they'll be sent an email, they'll set it up. Um, again, this method should only be used for a user that does not have school district email accounts, such as, such as your auditor. Um, the email address and Munis user attributes must match. Um, also, don't forget to remove that user when um, they're no longer needed and disable them in Munis user attributes. So let's see here. This is an example of that screen um, in Okta for user management. Uh, it's really simple. I just selected add user and added a user with the Gmail account, set it up. There's also a note on here talking about um, admin center. So Tyler does have uh, something called Admin Center, which is a newer um, product that is slowly incorporating many of these items into one location. You can choose to opt in there. If that's the case, you'll see this and you can activate the new Admin Center. Um, you would manage users from there as well if you had any external users. Also allows you to add a little more um, management to setting your um, password policy and thing like things like that. So there is a way to get users in that are not part of your district and um, yeah, I found it pretty easy to use. So I'm going to get to the questions here in the chat in just a second. So if you have any questions during your upgrade, the deployment engineer assigned to your case is there to assist. They'll send you a, um, an email with your case um, for both your, your test, train, and um, production environment. Currently, we have two deployment engineers that are dedicated to K Kentucky. Uh, of course, if you have questions on the DIA and other stuff, other things, there is the Munis team box that you can um, reach out to. And that is the end of my traditional presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing and hop over here to the chat. And let's see, I invited some of the Tyler folks, but I don't see, oh, I do see Shiva. Okay, I may have to unmute um, Tyler folks. Maybe you can help answer a couple of these questions for me. Um, so how will you create new music? Munis users. So you create them the exact same way you do now within Munis, except now you do not need to use the cloud admin to um, create the user there. The email account will match, has to match um, what's in Azure Active Directory. So the cloud admin um, 
part is done, you still create the user in Munis. Just make sure they have their, um, their email address in there. Yep, no more, no more need for cloud admin unless you need to have uh, them to, need access to Excel cubes. Um, um, what did I say? The secure.tylertech.com, um, a couple other things. For our MFA for multi-factor authentication, can we use Microsoft or Google Authenticator? Yes, either will work. Looks like Gertrude answered that. Um, ODBC and Crystal Reports. Um, Shiva or Dustin, are you on this call? Could you um, maybe throw in the chat or I can unmute you? Absolutely, uh, Christian, I'm here. Uh, I'm not sure what was the questions uh, for, if you could provide more details, that'd be great. And I don't believe we, uh, this will impact uh, ODBC or crystal report so far, uh, but without knowing the details, I cannot really tell. So we'll double check on that. But from what from what Tyler's saying, that your connection will still work the, um, you, it, with the TIDW. Um, let's see. Here. So question is, what if a user does not have a smartphone? How will they receive MFA authorization? There's more than one way to do multi-factor authentication. You don't always have to have an app. And I would say talk to your district technology leader about it because they would, they're setting that up in the district. And again, question on how to password resets work now. So just main Munis, that's, Active Directory, that's just like how you would reset your email pa root password. The only thing that would change with that, of course, is the need um, for the cloud admin, where you would have access to Excel cube, refreshes, year and backup, and the secure.tylertech.com. So another question here. Um, an email says documentation will be sent separately to district tech staff with steps. Do we know when that should come? There has been a lot of communication between the regional um, engineers at KDE and the district tech staff. So they should have um, received information at this point. I know they had regional meetings as well some, um, in the past week. So this is definitely being communicated. I know it's a hot topic for us. If I missed any other questions on here. Sorry, I'm just trying to roll down the list. So yes, any user who needs to access Munis from the F5 VPN will need to use their old Munis account. That is correct. As I mentioned the state does have a Cisco VPN. That may be a possibility. District tech staff will need to talk to the KDE support desk, not Munis, the KET support desk, and work on getting that set up if that's needed. That's good information to know. Um, that may be a Knox County thing. Gertrude posted something. Um, not all districts are set up the same. We'll just say there's different technology set up. So it took 16 minutes for the password to sync. Gertrude, I think from my understanding is you guys are set up a little bit different, but it shouldn't take that long. Um, your password to, in um, Microsoft, if you're, if you're a Microsoft district, your password, password and that's immediately synced. Let's see, anything else? Um, can you confirm how we need to go about getting a date scheduled on the calendar? I think I missed that. Yes, that for sure. That was early on in our presentation. Um, there is an email that was sent out. If you did not get the email, send an email to the munis at kde.ky.gov account. And there is a um, list on there of action steps, including a list, a link to an Excel file that's on our SharePoint site where you can see a calendar of available dates. And it also includes a link to a Microsoft form where you can enter your request for an upgrade date. Let's see. 
Uh, let's see here. Yep, thank you, Martin. Martin's been my um, savior on this. He works with me at KDE and responded to a question. Um, comment on here, I currently use Cloud Admin for refreshes, password resets, and urine backup. Is there another way to do that beside Cloud Admin? Not at the moment, but I mentioned that Munis has a new feature called Admin Center. They are, don't know when, and maybe another couple of years, and maybe a year. At some point, I know they're trying to move many features over to that admin center. Um, not sure when that will take place. And Greg Murphy said, can the scheduling email be sent again? Um, yes, I will go ahead and send that to all state Munis finance contact list after this in case anyone missed it. I sent it to just the CFO list. So if you missed it, I'll send it again. And sorry for all you people getting it. Um, let's see here. Oh, thank you, Martin, for dropping that in there. Martin dropped a link to a posting that I put on our SharePoint site. It requires you to enter your email address and password to access it. The same for getting to that Excel file and the form, but everyone should have access that's um, using their school district email credentials. And question about our next upgrade. That's for another conversation. I can say that Munis retires um, and they told us that the last um, W-2 update was, was for this past reporting year that they would not be putting one out. So um, that's now, things may change, but it, it does officially retire version 2019 um, this year. Okay, so I'm pretty much just sticking around with any more questions that people may have. I really appreciate everyone showing up for um, this webcast, the call. Uh, sorry you had to listen to my froggy COVID voice. I sound much better than I did a few days ago. So I'm just going to hang out here if anybody has any questions. I'm happy to unmute anybody and have a chat. If everybody's good, I'm just going to say bye and I'll hang out here. Thanks so much for showing up. If you have any questions, there's that Munis um, email address for our team. Send it there. Um, wanting to know if we're going to have a link for the PowerPoint slide. I will definitely get that converted and put that with the email I sent out to remind everybody to schedule. Um, I'll be in one. This is actually being reported by Megan, and I'll include a link to that. It'll be on the KDE Media Portal. Um, had another question in here is, what is order of steps to take? Run the DIA now before the test upgrade date? Yes, go ahead, you can run the DIA now. That can be done um, and should be done before your test upgrade. Do that in your live environment, refresh, train, and test. It's the duplicate email addresses are the ones that I see um, probably are gonna come up for everybody. Um, and duplicate em employee numbers, I don't know how many that would come up. I did see that on one district. So run that now and you can make those corrections within the DIA. If you have questions, reach out to the um, to our team. And Mar Martin raised his hand. Hey, Martin, can I just unmute you or can you? There you go. I did it. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Yep. Um, Thank you. And Kristen mentioned this, but I want to strongly encourage folks to um, figure out along with your EdTech leader how um, multi-factor authentication is going to work for your users well in advance and make sure it's working for everybody like go through the steps there's enrollment and, and so forth that has to be done to get a user set up for multi-factor authentication and it's not necessarily hard but it's a step that needs to be done and everybody will be happier if that is all working and all any kinks worked out of it before your migration. <laughs> Don't Very wait till the day Thank before you, migration to get that worked out. <clears throat> Very true. So what I found with MFA, um, and it will vary, you may see MFA come up when you set it up the first time, and then when you log into Munis for the first time, it may not be required, but that's 
because you authenticated already. Again, any questions, please talk to your district tech leaders on NMFA and you do want to get that set up and make sure people know how to use it before, um, before your actual upgrade. And no, Jill, you don't need to do a mute copy. I said, I really just suggest that as often as possible. If you have stuff, as I mentioned also early in the webcast, if you have stuff going on in any of those environments, that's fine. You don't need to do a refresh, but you still need to run the DIA and clean up those conditions before, um, before the, your upgrade can happen or else users won't be able to access your environment. And it could be a hard stop on the upgrade happening. So. Okay, that's all I have. Again, just sitting here answering questions as I come in. People feel free to drop off. And get scheduled. You can get scheduled now. There's no reason to delay. Good, great question. Dina always has such insight, and that's why she won that award recently. So the question is, what about payroll? Because typically we try to do Munis upgrades around having payrolls open. This is only impacts how you log into Munis. It does not impact Munis whatsoever as far as, you know, the core functionality of Munis. So having a payroll open does not have anything to do with this. It's just how you're logging into Munis. Thanks, Sheila. I miss you. Yeah, I see. We still have a lot of people here. Any more questions? Well, I'm going to turn off my camera so I don't have to keep looking at my face, but um, I'm here for more questions. I'm not going to end the um, call while people are still hanging on if there's just some last minute questions. So thanks for showing up, everybody. And thanks, Martin, for your input. So Jill, that may be a comment. When Jill had a question about what a web, what about the web account user? I'm not sure what that is. And that may be something we can talk about offline. used for employee self-serve. Um, Shiva may have already dropped off the conversation. Is the web account user, as long as it's not a duplicate email user account, it shouldn't be an issue. I, I'm not sure it's a question because it's a duplicate email account or I know Fayette County along with others will be happy to upgrade um, down the road when we can integrate this into employee self-serve so you don't have to do all those password resets. So we have, let's see here, w when will require MFA from Munis policy be, be added to our Office 365 tenant? I'm assuming um sounds like Thomas Burns is probably into um, technology because <laughs> I'm not sure the finance officer would um, know about all that. But uh, no knocks on the finance officers because that's typically beyond my um, realm of knowledge too. KDE I know is working on that. It will be for all districts that, and it should be um, there shortly for all districts, any district that is scheduled to upgrade um, within the next week or so, I know it'll be put in before your test upgrade date. Um, at least a day before is what I've told. Um, if you have any questions, you may want to talk to your regional engineer. And I know some more questions are coming out about the upgrade. Um, after we move to version 2019 and we're on Tyler Deploy, Tyler Deploy allows um, your, you as a Munis administrator as well as um, Tyler to better be able to roll out updates so it doesn't take as long. Uh, 
we could have all test environments upgraded within a month's time. Um, I, I'm not sure about live environments, but um, that's a whole nother conversation that I'm working with Kathy on and folks at Tyler to talk about our next upgrade. But um, no, I never anticipate anything to be spread out over years like it has in the past for upgrades. Um, you have the power to upgrade. Um, there's a, uh, Tyler requires you to take a release every, um, is it every 18 months? I'm not sure, sure exactly, 16, 18 months. So uh, upgrades in the future will be changing. Fifteen months. Thanks, Kathy. I well, I was totally wrong on the months, but I knew it was somewhere over a year and less than two. And thanks, Shiva responded to Jill's question. Yeah, so ESS again, you still is not part of this um TIDW upgrade. It's down the road. There will be um some integration, but not now. We got just a couple more moments, then I'm probably going to go ahead and end this. Last call for questions. <laughs> 